hey guys welcome and welcome back to my channel my name is lara savage and in this video i'm going to be showing you guys how to make this shirt dress so the shirt dress is with a collar and you can wear it in different ways now you guys know me sustainable fashion is my thing and i always try to make clothes that you can wear in more than one way now let's get our intro in and get started with this video Now I'm going to first make the pattern on this pattern paper. Um, I always prefer making my patterns first so that I won't make any mistake basically. So you're going to be needing your scissors, measuring tape, curved ruler, pen, um, quilting ruler, everything you need guys, bring it out right now. Now the first thing I'm going to do is measure 3 inches in from the center front. So this is the center front right here. I'm going to measure 3 inches and rule a line down to the hem. I'm inspired by thirst. I'm inspired by worth. I desire. So once that is done, I'm going to now divide them into one, two, and three. So it's going to have three compartments basically. So like what I'm doing right here in the video, I'm going to divide it into three different parts. So that's one inch for each part. And this will be the placket for the buttons. So you know you have to fold it in front to make your button placket. This is what it's going to be. And since this is our front and back pattern, you are going to fold in that placket for the back pattern because you're going to be cutting the back on a fold and this front piece will be two pieces so write it out fold in for the center back you guys know me i always like writing everything i need to write so the next thing i'm going to do is measure my shoulder to shoulder measurements now you're starting from the three inches line so the three inches points that's where you're starting from and i'm going to add one inch to my shoulder to shoulder measurement because i don't want you know a fitted shirt dress so i'm going to measure 16 inches divided by two gives me 8 inches and I'm going to mark it right there. Then for my shoulder slope, I'm going to go down by 1 inch and then I'm going to measure 9 inches after that for my armhole measurement. So like I said, it's a loose shirt so I'm adding 1 inch to all my measurements basically. So that's 1 inch right there. I'm going to measure it on the other side as well. Then I'm going to go down by 1 inch again for my bust point. So you know i'm using the bust the original bust point is already for the armhole now then the new bust point is going to be the next line basically so that's what i'm going to do right here then i'm going to go straight down to the hem and mark it right there i'm not measuring my waist measurements because it's going to be a straight shirt so it's the loops on the sides that i'm going to use to make it you know have a waistline basically you guys are going to see it so go straight down measure your hem and then rule a line representing the armhole line, the bust line, and your hem. And guys, before I forget, you're also going to measure your hip line so that you can get your measurements very well. So the next thing I'm going to do is measure my bust circumference divided by 4. Then whatever I get, I'm going to add 1 inch for ease and 1 inch for my seam allowance. So you know it's not a tight you know fitted um shirt basically it's a free shirt so i'm going to add one inch for ease and one inch for seam allowance and then you're going to connect the one inch slope for the shoulder slope so just like what i did here that's what you're going to do and then you're going to measure half of what this line is so whatever you get as half of it that's what you're going to work on as your armhole curve basically so just like i'm doing right here just follow what i'm doing right here this is the center point and then I'm going to use my curved ruler to cover it down right there. Now guys, that's the armhole I'm using for this dress. Then you're going to go to your hip line and measure your hip divided by 4 plus 1 inch ease and 1 inch seam allowance. And then you're going to connect from the armhole to the bust line. Then from the bust line to the hip and then from the hip down to the hem now for the hem i'm using the exact measurements of my hip so i'm not adding or reducing anything i'm just going straight down from the bust line to the hip then straight down from the hip to the hem so square it all up like i'm doing right here and then we're going to move on to the neckline so for my neckline i'm starting from that three inch placket so i'm going to be using three inches width by one inch for the back and 3 inches width by 3 inches depth for the front. So 3 by 3 and 3 by 1 um, for the front and back respectively. And then I'm going to mark it right there. I'm also going to rule my shoulder slope so that it can make my work easier. And then I'm going to curve it the way I'm going to curve a normal neckline. 
so guys you're going to cut out your back before your front now for me i always cut out the back and still leave the neckline but now cut the front um neckline on the fabric itself so that i can use this uh pattern for other projects that i'm going to use so i don't want to like spoil it basically so i'm going to cut out the back on a fold remember it's on a fold so you are folding in the plackets the three inch plackets for the back you're going to fold it in cut out the neckline and then before cutting your front part so like i said this is my front and my back pattern and this is what it finally looks like you can add you know more measurements if it's too short or if it's too long for what you need just add your measurements you can make it three quarter you can make it midi mini you know anything you want basically that's what you can use and then this is what my pattern looks like i'm now going to cut it out and then we're going to cut it out on our fabric and start sewing so guys i've cut out my fabric right here and this is what it looks like i've cut the back on fold like i said and i've cut the front two pieces of the front so now for the plaquettes you're going to add one inch wide interfacing along the entire edge of the front so both front pieces you're going to add one inch wide interfacing and then you're going to iron it to it once that is ironed you're going to fold it twice so just like i'm doing right here once twice that's what you're going to fold and then you're going to pin it all along down then you're going to sew it down the edge and the other edge so yeah you know you have two edges now so you're going to sew down both edges so from the top to the bottom that's what you're going to sew so just like i'm doing right here pin 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 till the end and then sew it down right there once that is sewn and even if it's not yet sewn because it's not going to affect what you're doing i always like doing most of my things you know simultaneously you're now going to put the front piece and the back piece together shoulder to shoulder right side to right side except you're sewing it like i am which is french seam like i always do i actually have a video showing you guys how to do a french seam i'm going to link it up here and down below in the description box so that you guys can see it so that you guys can see like a quick way to make it i made the video because i know i'm going to be mentioning um french seam a lot so like i was saying place your fabric right sides facing each other on the shoulder pin it together sew it down and then sew the sides down as well so you're sewing the shoulders the sides and then don't forget your plaquettes now guys i'm done sewing it and if you want a sleeve now i'm not i'm using a cap sleeve basically for this shirt if you want a sleeve you're going to pin your sleeves and then sew it all around and you have your sleeve but in this video i'm not going to go further into it because i'm going to go in details with my cap sleeve so if you want a sleeve this is what you should do so guys because i'm using a cap sleeve i've used the bias tape to finish the edges of my armhole so this is what it looks like right now i finished the edges it looks really really neat because you need a neat um armhole for your cap sleeve so for the cap sleeve i'm going to be using a fabric that is 13 inches by 12 inches so i'm going to be cutting two pieces of that and then i'm going to measure how long i want it to be basically on my shoulders so i'm using roughly four and a half inches to five inches then i'm going to take my fabric and fold it along the 13 inch side so the 13 inches edge you're going to fold it into two just like this and then remember i said i'm using five inches for my cap length i'm going to now times it by two and add one inch to it so that's 11 inches so on this line just like i'm doing right here i'm going to measure 11 inches and then i'm going to measure five inches from the fold so the fold on this fabric i'm going to measure five inches from there and i'm going to rule a line representing both lines once you're done cut it out fold it into four just like i'm doing right here and i'm going to take my curved ruler and i'm going to make a curve from one edge to the other now make sure the folded corners of your piece are not cut out make sure it's the open sides that are cut out so just like i'm doing right here the folded corner is at the other side and the open part is this one on the right hand side so can you guys see once i open it up my folded side is still intact like really 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 intact and then i'm going to pin it all around and sew it all around right there 
leaving a space that I'm going to turn it out from. So now that I'm done, I've ironed it, turned it out, and then I'm going to now take the curved side, guys, the curved side. Then I'm going to mark the center point and place it on the center point of the shoulder. So you're going to know it because the seam is already there. Just place it directly on that center point. And then I'm now going to pin it all around. So the way I'm doing it right here, this is why I said you need a clean finished um, armhole for this. Because you might not have a way of finishing the armhole once you've done this part. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm now going to sew it all around. Do it for the other sleeve and then sew it down right there. Now guys, I have sewn it and this is what it looks like. Now you can see the excess that is there. If you want it even, you know, shorter, you can make it shorter. If you want it longer, you can make it longer. So now I'm going to move on to the next stage. The next thing I'm going to do is work on my loops. Now remember the side loops I want for the styling of this shirt. I'm going to measure it right now. So I'm going to go down to my waistline. So from the top to about 16 inches, which is my waist measurement, I'm going to mark it right there. Then after that 16 inches, I'm going to mark at 15 and 14 inches as well because I'm using three loops. So I want them one inch apart. So I'm going to measure at 16 inches, 15 inches and 14 inches. So you're now going to measure four inches from the side seam. So that's what you're going to use to measure, you know, how um, far your loop is from the sides, basically. So four inches from the side into the back. 4 inches from the other side into the back, 4 inches from the side to the front, so like that. So you know how the loops are going to be from the front to the back, that's how you're going to do it. So you are doing this for the front and the back. Now guys, I'm going to take my bias tape and I'm going to sew it into a tiny loop. So just like I've done right here. So you know a bias tape comes in like this, so you're going to fold it again to form a thin loop. So the loops, I'm going to cut them 2 inches each, fold it into 2 and then place it on each point so can you guys see the points i've made it clearer now i'm going to now put each loop on each point so just like i'm doing right here and make sure your loops are facing the side not the center so make sure your loops are facing the side and i don't really know what comes next i'm just doing my best even though i'm so stressed out Everything just feels like a test that I feel so depressed when I can't seem to get out. But something deep inside won't let me quit. I swear. I'm going to do the same thing for the front as well and the other side of the back. Measure 16 inches down, go up by 15 and 14 to make three loops, and then that's basically what you're going to get. So now that everything is pinned, I'm going to sew it down right there. So I'm going to go to my sewing machine now and sew everything down so that all my loops are, you know, secure. So guys, here I have sewn it and this is what it looks like. Now to hide the raw edges of these loops, I'm going to take my bias tape. So the way it's wide, so what you're seeing as it's wide like that, the bias tape or any fabric you have that is about half an inch wide that's what you're going to use now i'm going to place it on the loops so from the top to the bottom the exact measurement i have from the top of the loop to the bottom i'm now going to cut it out and use it to cut out the remaining three loops basically so once i'm done with that i'm now going to place it on the loops to hide it so make sure you're hiding all the raw edges and then sew it along all the edges so can you guys see what i'm doing right here all the edges of um, this bias tape, this new bias tape you are placing on top of this, you are going to sew along all the edges, the four corners. So I'm going to do it for the other ones and then we're going to work on the belt loops. So for the belt loops, you are going to take um, a fabric that is one inch wide, fold it into two and then sew it down to make your belt loop basically. That's what I have right here. Can you guys see what it looks like? I've sewn it, I've turned it inside out, ironed it. And then I'm now going to place it at the top 
just like this so at the top facing the inside i don't know if you guys get what i mean exactly what i'm doing in the video so i'm going to place it right there sew it down then when i want to finish the other side i'm now going to fold it in using the excess and then i'm going to top stitch it right there so i'm going to top stitch it right there and it's going to look perfect so once i'm done sewing this is what it's now going to look like i have sewn this one sewn the top and sewn the bottom so that's why it looks like this looking really really perfect and then we're now going to move to our collar now guys for the collar you're going to measure around the entire neckline so the entire neck measure it from the beginning to the end divide whatever you get by two and then take a pattern paper of the full measurement then fold it using the measurement you got when you divided your neckline by two so just like i've done right here this measurement is the exact full measurement divided by two so it's on a fold now i'm going to label the open edge a so the corner at the open edge i'm going to label it a and from a i'm going to go up by 0.5 inch so can you guys see what i'm doing right here go up by 0.5 inch and i'm going to label that point b now guys i'm now going to fold my paper from the edge so basically i'm dividing that measurement of my neckline by four so to make my work easy i'm just going to fold it into two just like this to mark the center point then i'm going to label that part c and now i'm going to take my curve ruler and connect b to c so those labels are very very important so connect b to c using a curve and then we're now going to go up by one inch from you know the center point that's the fold at the edge and then we're going to continue measuring one inch there so the curve is also going to be one inch after the curve so do you guys get it's still going to be a curve at the end it's not going to be a straight line so just like i'm doing right here this is what you're going to do i'm inspired by thirst i'm inspired by worth i desire your worst so you and then we have our color stand so this is the color stand i'm going to cut it out this is all you need for the color stand and then we're now going to work on our main color you can just hide while I work. I ain't tired you first. I write a second, third verse about the lies you go disperse. You never did shit. I know it hurts. So guys, remember the neckline divided by two? Exactly what we did. We're going to have our paper again folded just like we did for the color stand. And then I'm going to label that part A again. And then from A, I'm going to go in by one inch. Go in by one inch and go up by two and a half inches. So I'm going to measure two and a half inches on the center. So that's the folded side and at that A. So from A to the top, it will be two and a half inches from the other side, two and a half inches. And then I'm going to now connect that one inch I marked from A to the new two and a half inches. So it's going to be a slant. So once you connect your slant, you're now going to connect it using a straight line again at the top to form your collar. So form your collar just like that straight down cut it out and that's all guys that's all you need to do for this color next i'm just doing my best even though i'm so stressed out everything just and now we're now going to cut it out on interfacing so you're going to cut it out the, this exact measurements you're going to cut it out on your interfacing and then you're now going to cut out your fabric so what you're going to have in your fabric would be half an inch wider than what you have on your interfacing so it's always good to have it you know cut out on your interfacing first then look at what i did i have half an inch along all the edges now i'm going to now iron the interfacing to my fabric so you're cutting two fabric pieces of each color pieces so one won't have interfacing the other would have interfacing so you're cutting only one interfacing for each of them as well so just like i've done right here cut one interfacing and use that one interfacing to cut two fabric pieces now guys i'm now going to iron it and this is what it looks like so now what i'm going to do is take my color piece and place it right sides facing each other and sew along the edges so you're not sewing the shorter edge you know one edge is wider than the other so the shorter one you're leaving it open and you're sewing down the sides the two short sides and the longest edge so now guys i've sewn it and i've turned it inside out and this is what it looks like can you guys see it now i'm going to take my color stand 
mark the center so wherever the center is on my color stand i'm going to mark it i'm also going to mark the center point of the open edge of my color piece so mark the center as well and then place both centers on each other so right sides facing each other that's how you're going to place it so place it right there and then turn it to the other side and take the other color stand mark the center as well and place it right sides facing again on the other side so can you guys see what i'm doing so you are sandwiching the main color piece into the two color stands now once that is done you would notice you have like an excess one inch that's the one inch excess that we went in when we we're making our pattern so it's perfectly normal so that's what you're going to do you're now going to sew all around the edges the edges of this color stand we're going to sew it along those two short edges and the entire one that is um, linking the color itself to the color stand so that's what you're going to do sew those three corners and then this is what it's going to look like so i've ironed it down i've turned it inside out and this is what it looks like i'm now going to mark the center again i'm inspired by worth i desire your worst so you can just hide while i work i ain't tired you first i'll write a second third verse now you're going to take your entire color place it right sides facing the wrong side of your shirt so your neckline of your shirt you're going to mark the center and mark the center on your um color stand and then you're now going to pin it right there so you're pinning it only on one part of the collar so can you guys see the color stand you're going to pin only one side to the wrong side of your shirt now pin it from the beginning of the neckline to the end of the neckline so pin it right there sew it down using half an inch seam allowance about the lies you go disperse you never did shit i know it hurts something deep inside won't let me quit i swear that i'm inspired by all this shit tell me that i can't and i won't that's what guys be the most fuck your lies i'll do what i want and then once we're done we're going to hide everything inside so you're sandwiching everything you've sewn inside the color stand and then you're going to fold it in using that half an inch seam allowance excess that is there as well you're going to fold it in and place it on the neckline so can you guys see what i'm doing right here this is what you're going to do you're going to place it on it to hide all the raw edges so the front is going to be clean and the back is going to be clean so you're going to sew it down right there i'm finishing it in front because it's going to make the front look neat at the end so it's going to be very neat from the front and at the back even if there's any you know little error it's going to be at the back so nobody's going to see it now guys if you're pinning the color to the shirt and you happen to have like an excess make sure the excess moves to the center so just like i've done right here i've used the excess to create a pleat so can you guys see it this is the pleat right here when i'm done you're going to see what it looks like this is the pleat i have pleated it inside and then i'm now going to finish up my collar just like that and guys i am done with my shirt this is what it looks like this is what i was talking about you're going to fold it and top stitch it right there and this is what it looks like i love it i've top stitched it basically and this is the excess i was talking about it looks like a pleat already you can pleat it inside to make it look like this from the front or look like this from the back so it's up to you any design you want you can use it and this is what it looks like i've added my label i've added everything i need to add my buttons i've added the buttons as well add your buttons on your plaquettes also don't forget to finish your hem and that's all guys that's all you need for this particular shirt i have styled it in different ways as a free shirt as you know a cover-up you can wear it as a cover-up actually you can wear it with shirts you can wear it with anything it's going to look really really beautiful um yes i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial it's been amazing making this amazing tutorial basically don't forget to subscribe like this video share within and outside your circle comment in the comment section what else would you like me to make you know if you make it as well tag me on instagram at lara savage creations and i'll be ready to showcase your creations to all my growing followers until my next video do have yourself a wonderful morning noon 
or night wherever you are it's still your favorite content creator and fashion entrepreneur lara savage signing out